Good afternoon, and welcome to this afternoon's VetNet Entrepreneurship Track presentation entitled Building Your Personal Brand. My name is Mike Schenick, and I'm the Program Manager for VetNet here at the Institute for Veterans and Military Families located on the campus of Syracuse University. Before I th turn things over to today's pre presenter, I would like to first go through some housekeeping notes on how to address the speaker and ask questions. If you're participating live in the Hangout, please feel free to speak up at any point during the presentation and ask your question, or you can enact the chat function by hovering over the left side of your screen, clicking the chat icon, and a box will pop up on the right side of your screen. If you are watching our live stream out on YouTube, please feel free to type your comment or question in the comment box, and we'll make sure that it is relayed. And finally, you can type your question out on the Google Plus event page, and we will make sure it is addressed. I'd now like to turn things over to Giovanni Modica from Accenture, who will be taking us through today's presentation. Giovanni? Hi, everyone. Thanks for having me. I just want to introduce myself real quick and um, tell you on the journey we're going to be going through today. Um, we're going to be looking at building your personal brand, standing out in the sea of sameness. There's so much noise out there. It's hard to filter through it all. Knowing you got, a lot of you guys are having your own businesses, starting your own businesses, it's very difficult. Um, I'm sorry, just trying to get my screen share up for you guys. It's very hard to get through all the noise. Um, a lot of different things going on out there, and you yourself are the shining ambassador for your brand. Um, but a little bit about me before we get into it all today. I'm Giovanni Modica. I'm from North Carolina. I am part of Accenture Federal Services. I'm in our management consulting practice. I'm a senior analyst. And prior to that, I was in the Army National Guard of North Carolina. I served as an infantryman with the 30th Heavy Brigade Combat Team and was deployed to Baghdad, Iraq in 2000. Nine, where I supported the Iraqi Federal Police. So with developing your personal brand, there's three things you have to do first. First, you need to discover it, you need to develop that brand, and then you need to promote it. We're going to be doing a deep dive into each of those three things and really just go into what needs to be done to create that image you're wanting to show. So what is a personal brand? Um, I know it's, it seems like it's a very popular topic these days. A lot of people are putting out a lot of content on it, but I'm sure a lot of people are still unsure what exactly it means. Um, personal brand encompasses your reputation, your persona, and your values. Um, it's everything that goes into how people view you, both professionally and personally. Um, I'm not as eloquent as Jeff Bezos. So he said, your brain is what people say about you when you're not in the room. So I really like for you guys to think about it. Look at the uh, probably three or four closest people you interact with in a business environment on a daily basis. If you stepped out, what would they say about you? And what would you like for them to say about you? And think about the disconnect. There's always a big, or sometimes it can be a large difference between what we think we're presenting and what the actuality is. So self-awareness is really important when you're trying to develop your own personal brand. Um, being honest with yourself, setting expectations, and knowing your baselines are a really important thing to do. So another good way to go about this is look at people who have a great personal brand. I mean, Steve Jobs is a classic example. I mean, the man defined Apple. I mean, even in his death, he's still the first person you associate with that brand. He was known as a fierce leader, an innovator, and those things spelled over into his company. But Apple has been so successful because of the leadership and branding that Steve Jobs presented. He did some more subtle things, um, 
that don't always go into a personal brand, but his iconic black turtleneck. Um, he creates the same image. Mark Zuckerberg does this as well. The hoodie look, uh, the disheveled Harvard guy. But he's creating a very consistent personal brand. Displaying that to your audience is a key important thing to remember. Being consistent, but also being true to who you are. Which brings us into our next area, your values. Think about what you stand for. Coming from the military, we all had our individual services core values. Your personal ones, what do you stand for? Uh, Gary Vaynerchuk, he's somebody I'm, going to be talking about a little bit more here in this presentation. He is the brand, personal branding guru. Um, he, if you get anything from me today, I just suggest going out and looking him up. He will make you invigorated about starting your own, or, uh, either starting a business or continuing on your entrepreneurial ventures. Um, he grew a mom and pop liquor store into wine library, um, that TV. $60 million business, and he is the king of social media marketing, as well as crafting a very strong look personal brand. And it's important to build a personal brand because it's the only thing you're going to have. Your reputation online and in the new business world is pretty much the game, and so you've got to be a good person. You can't hide anything, and more importantly, you've got to be out there at some level. So letting it back to your values, we do learn that it this information age, everything you do can be, it's captured, it's sent out to someone else. Being cognizant of your surroundings and your audience is so important when developing your personal brand. I'm gonna show you a little video of Gary, because like I said, um, why well, say it when so someone were now? Not social networks has, by the way, I'm my stock in air quotes always Hardcore fans know what I'm talking about. So the internet is, uh, is stuck in a, a place where people have realized that it's disrupted publishing. You read books on Kindles and iPad. I can go direct with my future books. May, may not. Uh, music, right? We, we download music now. There are more CDs. Commerce. You buy things like Amazon. You know, all these things have happened. But the one thing that has disrupted media companies quite a bit, the cost of that trade to become a media company is so low. You don't have to buy a TV network anymore. You don't need to buy a multi-million dollar printing press to reach the end consumer. You literally use products that are free, like WordPress and Medium, and now because of the word of mouth, which is the plumbing of society, now that social networks have mapped that. Social networks, if you don't know, if you've got it twisted, social networks are the plumbing of word of mouth in our society now. So with that, which is distribution, which is really what media is, and with free sites like WordPress and Medium, things of that nature, which is the content production aspect, basically the cost to get out there is double zero. Robert Parrish. Now, here's what's really happening. Where I think people are misunderstanding things is that the cost of entry to being relevant in our society today is content. If you're not putting out stories, you basically don't exist. And so what I really want to make this video about is for once and for all to put a stake in the ground or my fist on this table, a Khrushchev style since I'm Russian. Every one of you is a media company. Now I know people hate hearing the term personal brand. It feels icky. Fine. Call it your reputation. And I know it might sound like, ugh, everybody's a media company. So cliche marketing talk. Fine. Call it what you want. But if you are not putting out content that is bringing value to people, whether that's making you giggle, whether that's making you think, whether that's educating you on wine or business or whatever it may be, if you're not putting out that content, you are being drowned out by the massive volume of content that is being put out by businesses, media companies, entrepreneurs, on and on and on. If you don't understand this and you head into a 2014 world and you don't have a very strategic strategy on putting out content on a daily basis, a weekly basis that's actually bringing value to the end consumer, which then reciprocates you getting business, you will be left out in the cold. You will be blockbuster. You will be the person that, blockbuster video, you will be the person that owned a ton of horses before the 
the car. You will be Borders Books that laugh at Amazon. You can laugh at all this video all you want, but I'm looking forward to having a conversation with you in four years if you do not act on this rant. So like I said, Gary Vaynerchuk is very passionate. Um, he's one of those people you walk away and you definitely have an opinion. Um, but everything he has to say really resonates to the entrepreneur. You have to create content. You have to put yourself out there. You need to create an identity. And being aware of your own identity is so important when you're going off to craft your own businesses. Um, before we move on to the next section, everyone, anybody have anything you want to talk about regarding that. Um, I just, self being self-aware, identifying um, your strengths in terms of values, um, where you excel, things like that. Don't see any questions out on YouTube or on Google Plus. Um, Valerie, I see you're participating live. Please feel free to ask any questions and uh, Jim will continue to track the questions out there, Giovanni. Okay, thanks. No, no, I don't have any questions. I, that last that YouTube was very hard for me to hear, the, the last one, so. I'm sorry about that. Giovanni, right. is that, out on, is that out, out on YouTube where we can find the link and share it? It is. Um, let me switch over. I'll go, I'll go ahead. Why don't I go ahead and find it, and I'll share it in the group chat. All right. Um, if you can share the link to the Prezi in the group chat as well. Jim, Jim did that on the Google Plus event page, so gotcha. should be able to do that as well. Okay, great. Thanks. I'll catch up with it later. Great. Thank you. So you've identified your strengths. You have an idea of what a brand, personal brand is. Now it's time to where you want to take that. You have to define yourself as well as your audience. Back to like we were saying with your core values, what do you stand for? Um, what are your unique strengths? What makes me awesome? Um, like I said, all this self-awareness, it's really important because you're sending a crafted message. You need to know yourself and play off of those strengths. What differentiates you from that sea of sameness? How are you going to stand apart from your competitors and be a memorable face in the crowd? And as I'm going through these things, guys, please um, try to do some self-reflection. Jot down, um, play along with me here, jot down these different ideas. Um, really try to do some introspection and um, see where you want to take this. I really feel that having a strong personal brand um, can go leaps and bounds with helping your business get to the next level. And what kind of relationships do you want to have? Who do you want to talk to? Um, always be looking at those next steps. With, with your business, it's all about relationships these days. Um, people want to do business with people they like. It's very as simple as that. Yes, um, some people will always be lowest cost shoppers, but in this information age and in living in a time where there's so much content, so much media, we have to put ourselves out there and be likable. It's a lot easier to do business with someone you actually like. And it's what do you want to be known for? You have, it's your personal story. I mean, how do you present yourself to others? Um, having a good elevator pitch, um, just how to display yourself in a quick 10, 15 second pitch to display where you're, what those strengths are you have, what unique you're bringing to the table, and what you're doing about it. That's one of your goals. We've talked a lot about beginning but we want to know what our end states, and then we want to push through them. Um, what do we call it success? When looking at your businesses, is it just getting to that next sales record? Is it Are you trying to generate a strong user base, a loyal user base? Um, do you want so many likes on social media? Think about your goals and how applying your personal brand and doing these different um, 
being very deliberate with your personal brand, how it will help you get there. So into the third section with promoting your personal brand. This is the area that um, I feel a lot of people are underutilizing and where there's so much more potential going forward. And you have to tell your story. Uh, you got to put yourself out there. You've got to brag a little bit, but being also honest about it. Um, in today's business place, like Gary was saying, it's you are your own media company. This is out there with communities of people with dedicated user bases that want to engage. Uh, Gary Vaynerchuk, he's runs these multi-million dollar businesses and he still personally answers every single one of his fan emails every day. He spends about six hours a day. He is generating so much content and he makes all these videos. He's on every social media platform imaginable. I'm sure plain I, I haven't even heard of. Uh, but he's out there creating all this great content that's just out there building his businesses and connecting people to his brand. So the interoperability of all our social media um, really helps get your brand going. I'm sure most business these days, you're as entrepreneurs, you have a Facebook. But are you on Twitter? Are you on Instagram? Pinterest? Um, are you making content videos on YouTube? Are you on Snapchat? Do you have a WordPress blog? I mean, there's so many different ways out there to deliver content. And you might not like Twitter, but if that's where your customers are and that's where they want to be engaged with your brand, it's where you need to go. And you can use all of these different resources, link them together, and create this large web of all your different communities. And just having that community-based resource with your business and your personal brand, they really tie in together. And you have the ability to generate a ton of content and a very loyal user base. And engaged authenticity. I mean, even with all this personal branding talk, it's also important to stay true to yourself. Going back to that first exercise of self-awareness, um, you really need to be aware of everything you bring to the table as well long as, as well as where you're lacking. But being true uh, to your values, to your approach to business, people appreciate that and people notice it. And when you're acting in that manner, people are more compelled to like you. They want to work with you. And where that spills over into your business's brand is do you have brand advocates? It's nice to have a large number of likes on Facebook, but what is a like going to get you other than a status credit number? Nothing. It's more important to be generating content and promoting dialogue with users. Um, having a dedicated fan base and people who truly believe in your brand, it will create return on investment for your than going out and just trying to get everyone to like your pages or um, putting out content that's not people don't want to engage with. And so what's next, guys? You have to get out there and make it happen. Um, there's so many resources out there on personal branding and using social media to um, send out your message to the world and um, really combining your personal brand and aligning it with your business. Um, anybody out there in the field want to talk more about maybe some social media strategies, connecting into all these different platforms? 
So Giovanni, I had a topic that I think might be useful. I know here at the Institute we use Hootsuite. Do you recommend using some sort of social media uh, management system or dashboard to manage all the different platforms that you are utilizing? Honestly, I, I think whatever works for the person. I mean, as long, with the caveat to that being, as long as you are still creating genuine content. As um, startups are growing and um, people are getting more employees, they'll hi they tend to hire a young, fresh out of college person to be their social media guru or their brand manager for that. When in reality, that's one of the most important jobs out there these days. If you are your first line to your audience. So things like Hootsuite are great. And they compile everything into one place, but you also shouldn't be practicing are passing out the same content on every platform. Um, you would really need to tailor what you're putting out there to the particular audience using each specific platform. And what would you say, you know, surrounding your personal brand and crisis management? Say perhaps in your venture something happens have you seen instances or worked with people where there has been a crisis and how have you kind of led them down the road to, um, you know, repair that or, or patch that up? I mean, we see it so many times in the media these days. People not using social media responsibly. I mean, it's a very powerful tool and it can have dire consequences if you aren't being cognizant and very deliberate in what you post. Um, this is such an important part of your identity and your business in this day and age. And I think it also just really goes back to that authenticity. If you own up to a mistake and just be like, yes, this happened. This is what we're doing to move past it. I feel like that is much more appreciated um, by people out there rather than canned responses. And also going back to is if you have a loyal user base where you are genuinely connecting with them, where you are making that person to person connection rather than making it your business to that person, I think you have a little more leeway sometimes. Okay, thanks. So we have a question from Becky Watson, who's one of our alumni here at the Institute for Veterans and Military Families, and she asked, this is Betsy, Becky Watson, owner of Music for Wellness, regarding um, and yes, regarding social media, if you have a niche market, for me it's older adults over the age of 65 that are not on social media, do you re recommend only focusing on one social media platform that they may use, such as Facebook or, or LinkedIn? And to give you a little background on what Becky does, she does uh, music group music therapies for um, senior citizens. It's uh, definitely interesting with that demographic, but more and more are getting online. There are um, dedicated different platforms out there for different groups. Just thinking about different ways to deliver your content. Um, with create, I, like I know my grandfather, for instance, he does spend a ton of time online, and he's um, taking in all this different content. But if you were with your business able to tailor it specifically to that target audience, they're going to want to be much more engaged. I know with an uh, older population like that, it's harder to make that initial engagement. But moving as, as you move forward and create that relationship, um, I, th I think it's a really untapped one as um, I feel they're being neglected currently. Thanks for the answer, and thanks for the question, Becky. Keep them coming if you have any additional ones. Um, I, I have a question, Giovanni. How, I, with the younger generation, I mean, we grew up on social media, especially in the last 10 years or so. Um, you know, if I'm a young entrepreneur and I'm launching a venture, how do you recommend separating yourself, your personal social media, from your business social media and, and not overlapping too much? Sometimes, though, they, you want them to become one and the same. If you have a strong persona, if you're a character, you might sometimes want to make them collide. If you're likable, people will associate that with your brand. Um, but also, 
there's great things out there with privacy settings and being cognizant with everything you post still though really important but I want to I personally take it the other direction and I play it up even more I share greater content I share more meaningful content and one thing I see is so many people when they're either starting their businesses or getting out there is they create all these profiles get on all these pages and they're just trying to sell, sell, sell. They're just shoving things down people's throats. We're constantly bombarded by ads. We are, and a lot of times as business people, we're looking for that quick win. We're, we are salespeople, but we're always trying to get that immediate, what, what can you give me, give me. Sometimes you have to give back first. Going to your user base and creating connections, like answering questions for them, do, take, taking that extra special touch, associate good feelings for you and for your brand with that person. Showing that you actually care goes a really long way. Thanks. So we have a question from Deanna Cole, who's a VWISE New York City graduate, which happened back in June of 2014. And she asks, for a person starting out, is there a quote-unquote checklist of sorts that someone could refer to as what success might look like, or a preferred site, blog, or book that I can refer to? In terms of checklist, I mean, it's really good. There's nothing really out there in terms of for that, because it's dependent on the niche you're in, the scalability of your business, and what all you're trying to do. But I love Gary Vaynerchuk. I, I mean, had his quote in there and um, showed you his video. He has three books now. He's New York Times best-selling author. And this guy started out in his dad's liquor store in New Jersey stocking shelves as a kid. And he turned it into about a $60 million business with Wine Library TV because he spent days or multiple hours every week making videos. And you saw his personality answering wine questions. He became an expert in whatever he's doing. And he provided value. It's really important to whatever you're getting in, you're venturing off into, to become as knowledgeable about everything in that arena as you possibly can. That way, you can provide that value. Um, but Gary Vaynerchuk has so much content out there. Just watching him alone, you'll learn so much, and it will really invigorate you uh, to get out there and work. He, he can be a little colorful at times. Um, I will admit but he really makes you stop and think. And um, his first book was Crush It, then The Thank You Economy, and um, his third one is Punch, Punch, Jab. Um, just go to YouTube, look up any of his keynotes. He's went from, like I said, being just known as a wine guy to now he is known as the branding, personal brand expert. He now owns a media company, they he and they're angel investing in all kinds of great companies. And he also has a branding consulting firm. He took his personal brand of just being known as the wine expert and used his personality and all that brand capital that he had from answering all those questions, from being an expert in his field, from going out there actually caring what he was trying to deliver and helping people. And he's built an empire around it. So we have another question that, that came through. And it's, uh, it's one that you see more and more in the media nowadays if there's a crisis or if something was posted. And the question asked, um, is the quote unquote, my account got hacked, still a viable excuse? Or do you think it should be addressed differently? Could you say that last part one more time, please? Sure, sure. So it says, is my, is quote unquote, my account got hacked still a viable excuse? Or do you think that people should approach it differently, um, you know, even if it, it, it did indeed get hacked? I mean, we're seeing this, it's very relevant. I mean, after seeing what's happened um, with Sony and all these other companies recently, multi billion dollar companies who should have all the strong IT infrastructure and cybersecurity they're still being attacked by these problems. So it's kind of daunting you as a small guy, how your entire business can be decimated 
by hackers or by not having important or having strong um, cyber security efforts in place. Honestly, I'd recommend just making sure you have really strong passwords and being very diligent about it. Um, people see security, um, especially when smaller businesses and personally, as, oh, that's just something else I have to shell out money for. But do you not lock your house at night? Do you not have locks on your car? You should have locks on your brain. And just being very diligent about that, and if it does happen, just hope that nothing gets out. And if, or back to the authenticity aspect, don't be acting in a way that's not true to you or true to your brand. As long as you try to stay as authentic as possible, it will minimize any potential damage if there was a hack or a leak. Thanks. So Valerie, or I know we have Deanna, Becky, and I know there's a handful of other viewers out on YouTube. Please feel free to send any additional questions or initial questions over. Um, and, and we'll stand tight for a few minutes and see if we, we get any any more that come through. Um, in the meantime, Giovanni, do you have any kind of closing remarks or closing notes that you'd like to mention before we, we close out the Hangout? I just really like to reiterate that this is something you should be aware of if you want to take your business to the next level, um, as well as your personal business. Um, I know not everyone here might be having their own venture right now, but having that uh, brand for yourself is also important in a corporate world. I mean, do you want your bosses to just see you as another worker bee, or do they, when they think of you, have um, positive thoughts and imageries and be like, that's somebody I can go to. By being memorable, it will get you a lot further than just being good. You, but don't get me wrong, being good is also a very core um, aspect of going anywhere. Thank you very much. Um, so I don't see any additional questions out there as of now, so I think we'll, we can go ahead and, and close on out. Now, Jim Powers did go ahead and share the presentation out on the Google Plus event page, so please feel free to access that. And if you're watching out on YouTube after the fact, please feel free to go to um, Google Plus and search FetNet Entrepreneurship Track, um, and you can go ahead and find this presentation and access it. Um, and again, thank you to Giovanni from all of us at the Institute for Veterans and Military Families. We really appreciate the, the efforts. And we look forward to working with you in the future. Have a great afternoon. Thanks, guys.